Welcome back. Take a look at these statements. So here is some example of hypotheses errors. Americans tend not to trust their, their government. What would you say is the error being made here? How about it contains only one variable? Trust. To be a hypothesis, we must relate our variable trust to something else. So, for example, the younger people are, the less likely they are to trust their government. Or the less people trust government, the less likely they are to participate in politics. How about this one? Turnout is related to age. The error here is it fails to specify how these two variables are related. Remember, a hypothesis is a conjectural statement that specifies a directional relationship between two variables. So you want to ask yourselves, are young people more likely to vote or less likely to vote? How is the relationship between age and voting related? So <clears throat> we could think of it, the older people get, the more likely they are to vote. Or we could look at it like a problem sort of at a state level. The higher the proportion of eligible voters under the age of 30, the lower a country's turnout. How about this one? Union members are more likely to vote for parties of the left. If you guess that it was incompletely specified, for example, we don't know with whom union members are being compared, then you're correct. When the independent variable is categorical, remember we need to put all of the reference categories of our independent variable in our hypothesis so we understand the comparison being made. So restating this properly, we might say that union members are more likely to vote for parties of the left than non-union members. Okay, good, here's another one. Public sector workers are more likely to vote for social democratic parties than for neocon parties. Do you see the problem? This is our fourth error, hypotheses being improperly specified. The problem with this variable is that someone's created this hypothesis in terms of categories of the dependent variable, but remember you need to specify the categories of your independent variable and only specify the category of your dependent variable you expect to be most likely or least likely to be present given the category of the in independent variable you're most interested in. So for example, restated properly, public sector workers are more likely to vote for the social democratic parties than private sector workers or the self-employed. So you can see public sector workers private sector workers and the self-employed are all categories of our independent variable and the probability that they vote social democratic is the property of the dependent variable that we're most interested in observing. Here's a new one. The turnout to vote should be higher among young Americans. Can you guess this one? If you guess that this is a normative statement, you're correct. Hypotheses, again, should never contain words like should, ought, better than, because value states cannot be value statements cannot be tested. So ask yourselves what you want to do regarding turnout. Uh, you might relate it to another variable. The more formal schooling people have, the more likely they are to vote. Or you could look at the impact of voting turnout. The higher the vote to turnout, the more responsive a government will be. Here's a new example. Mexico has a more stable government than Nicaragua. Can you identify the error? If you said error six that it um, contains proper names, you are correct. So because it has proper names, it limits our ability to generalize, which is a critical function of the scientific process. So you have to ask yourself, what is it about Mexico and Nicaragua that contributes to differing levels of stability? And if you can understand what that underlying construct is and operationalize it, you can test it. So, for example, possibly they have different levels of economic development, and thus you might have a hypothesis that says the higher the level of economic development, the more stable a government will be. All right, so here's an example of our, our last one. The more politically involved people are, the more likely they are to participate in politics. And this contains our seventh error, right? This hypothesis is true by definition because the two variables are just simply different names for the same property. This is a tautology. Restating this properly, we might say something like, the more involved people are in voluntary organizations, the more likely they are to participate in politics. 
Or we might say the more people participate in politics, now we're using participation in politics as an independent variable, the more attention they'll pay to news about politics. Fantastic. Great job. I think we now have a good solid understanding about how to operationalize variables and how to use variables in a hypothesis. And moreover, I think we have a terrific understanding of some of the common pitfalls with the development of hypotheses. Now this will help us write much better hypotheses and make much clearer the tests that we're going to run to establish the evidence in support of our theories. Great job, guys. We'll talk to you soon.